I remember very well coming down the mountains in, in Peru to Ayacucho uh, and, uh, and, and meeting a man there who was, who was uh, a developer of golf courses in, a, in, in the United States. And this was, uh, this was a time when England particularly was going through a terrible economic crisis. And, uh, and the whole world was struggling. I mean, it was, it was to do with oil, because the, the, the time that, that I left on that first journey there was the beginning of the big oil crisis that actually killed almost all uh, the big ship movements a across the Atlantic. I mean, and so I, ca I came down into this real, really d dirty little town, as it seemed to me then, um, and found and found this rather <coughs> affluent fat man from Florida um, traveling, and um, and he he had said that the that this was obviously the best time to be going off on a big journey because there were no nobody was building golf courses in America anymore, um, and, so, and and I suddenly realized, of course, that is the right attitude to take to uh, to travel is you 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 need, you want to choose the moment when there's nothing much at home to to help you that that would be the perfect time to be going to be going out in the world because uh, you, you don't need much money to travel you don't you know if you if you have the right attitude you can really get by with very little and it's a terrific opportunity to learn to live without very much and at the same time enjoy yourself and and so so that would be my advice to anybody you know at a time of crisis is to get on get on your bike and if you can't get on a motorbike get on a bicycle or do it on roller skates or do it on a skateboard or go you go any any way you can because really there's no reason why you shouldn't travel in, in any in any on foot i mean it's it's fine i've done a long journey on foot it was very it was very revealing and very interesting to to do that and i got a great deal from it including my wife, <laughs> as it happens. So really, it, it, it's, a, it's a mistake. It's a terrible mistake for people to think that they have to save up for years and that, they, and, and, and that it's going to cost them a fortune to do it. The only problem is to get started. And, and getting started is very difficult. And of course, if like me, you don't know the world, you don't know anything much about the world when you start, um, it can be very frightening. And I, I suppose it's a toss up whether the thing that holds most people back is their, their concern about losing their place in the social, um, <clears throat> in the social order, losing their step on the ladder, um, or whether it's just fear of what might happen to them when they get out there. Uh, as far as the social order is concerned, my... Now, I don't know who I'm talking to, you see. I don't know if I'm talking to some uh, railway man in Salamanca who, who's, who's got a, 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 a pension scheme that he hopes might one day produce a little money for his retirement and things like that. It's very hard for me to advise him to st stop working at, uh, on the railway <laughs> and give up his house and move off into the world. And yet I swear <clears throat> that if he had the strength and, and the interest to do it, it would be a good move. Because one of the things that happens to you when you travel is that you grow. You, you really grow in a lot of different ways. You, you become much more aware of everything. You become much more, your judgment is improved enormously. You, you, your survival instincts are, are challenged. You become very easy with other people, people of all kinds. So, <clears throat> um, so if, you, if, if, if you once put yourself through this process and come back, you are in a much better position to take advantage 
of all the opportunities that exist in the society. And you don't have to be a railway man for the whole of your life. You can become all, all sorts of different things. Then, of course, there's the wife. I don't know how you deal with the wife of the railway man. And, uh, and, and, and so a lot of my advice is not going to obviously be taken very seriously, but, but it's, it's nonetheless meant very seriously. And then the other thing, of course, is that people are afraid, as I was afraid. Because to go, to go into a world that you don't know, um, and to do it properly, which is to say, not have all kinds of escape mechanisms, you know, like a lot of money in your pocket or, or, um, or friends everywhere, prearranged meetings with people so that you're always going to be sleeping in a nice hotel wherever you go, that sort of thing. If you're really going to go out into the world in order to know it and to, and to, and to join, join it as opposed to just observe it, then that can be a frightening prospect and I was certainly scared when I started. And I can remember the fear, I can remember the um, anxiety that I had. And I know, I know, although I didn't realize it at the time, uh, that that was the reason for it, but I had a rash on the back of my, of my neck and my head <coughs> that, that lasted for quite a long time and it was, a, it was a nuisance. And I know that that was because I was scared. Um, but the fear itself is first of all very valuable because it makes you really very alert looking for danger and there are a lot if it's especially if you've never ridden a motorcycle very much and you're going on big roads and there are lots it, it you need to be very careful and uh, and I learned to avoid danger by being ultra alert, very careful and to see, guessing always what might come out of a side road, what might come out from behind a truck, what, what a particular um, idiot on a, motor, on a bicycle would do, what the dog, the mad dogs will do, all, all, all of these things were very important to me, to my survival. So then, <coughs> And not, not to mention, of course, the fear of, of, uh, of, of these bandits that we're all told are swarming everywhere in the world, although I personally never met one. Um, the, the one thing that used to stop all Americans from going to Mexico was that there would be bandidos everywhere, you know, that, and, and, uh, and that would be the end of that. And of course, there aren't. I mean, there really aren't. I just. I just had something stolen from me um, in, the back, in, a, in a peaceful back road in London and it's the worst theft that I've actually had to, had to deal with in, in the whole of these last 30 years. And it all happened on the doorstep of a friend in a small back road in London. Uh, it, it doesn't really happen out there. <coughs> so you have to find these things out as you go. And the, um, and, and the important thing is not to stop being afraid, but to turn the fear into a kind of proactive radar screen that you run. You know. So, riding about um, in the world, I, I always make a great deal of space around me, which is a, a, a re really important. And it horrifies me to watch um, kids on bikes in traffic dealing with it as though it were kind of as though they were in some kind of fluid medium where they could always control exactly <coughs> what all the cars are going to do and, and you know and they're usually wearing shorts and sandals and and uh, and, and probably nothing over on, on top and and they just think it's all so cool, you know, going through the traffic like that. And then every now and again you hear a terrible noise and you know that they've been squashed. Um, it, the, the, the thing is, do you want to live or do you want to have fun risking your life? You know, I, that's a choice people have to make. 
but if you're on a journey, I don't think you can afford to have fun risking your life. You have to get, you have to get there. Uh, you have to preserve yourself. So you, you have to make a lot of space around you. You have to know who's behind you and who's alongside you and who's in front of you and what you would do if at any moment any one of these these people who are surrounding you um, do something strange. So, so that's, that, that, that part of it is, is really essential to get used to being very aware of everything that's happening. And of course this will help you to understand what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm.